Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned, not-for-profit hospital. I'm going to be bringing you programs that provide information about health issues relevant to our community. We're going to have physicians and healthcare specialists on the program who will tell you how to prevent those issues or where to go to get help if you already have them. In addition, we're pleased to introduce Medical Alert, a new program that's from Mayo Clinic, a partner of KRMC. As you all know, there are enormous challenges facing healthcare today, from increases in our insurance premiums to cutbacks in access and Medicare. The average consumer is scrambling to make sure that they've got good health care coverage. Now more than ever, it's important that we all take responsibility for our own health. Prevention is the key to staying healthy, and I hope that these programs will help you learn how to become a healthier individual. The topic for our program this week is acute rehab. My guest today is Jill Laxon from the Acute Rehab Department. She's a certified occupational therapy assistant at Kingman Regional Medical Center, and I'll introduce you shortly after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. As I said, our program this week is about acute rehab, and my guest is Jill Laxon, a certified occupational therapy assistant in the acute rehab department here at Kingman Regional Medical Center. Welcome, Jill. Hi, thank you. It's great to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. So tell me, what is a certified occupational therapy assistant? CODA, you call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the job of the CODA is to be the assistant to the occupational therapist. Okay. And the role of occupational therapy in general really covers anything that's important to you. And I know that seems like a very broad statement, mm -hmm. but more specifically, we make sure that everyone that we meet is able to do the things that they need to do on a daily basis. Can they bathe themselves, dress themselves? If it's their responsibility to take care of other people, can they still cook, clean? If they have any hobbies that they like to do on a daily or just some kind of regular basis, we make sure that, or we try to make sure that they can return to those things. Wow, that's mm -hmm. a, a big, broad scope. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a big, big job. Um, how do you become a certified occupational therapist? Well, there are different types of programs. Most of them are, are in community colleges. It's an associate level program, so it's two years. Okay. And you go through the program. They, it's pretty intensive that you go through all the all the medical classes, anatomy and phil physiology, those types of things. And then once you get into the OTA courses, they start fine tuning and teaching you about different diagnoses, th the different types of treatments that you can do for different diagnoses. Okay. Once you get through the program and your internships, or I'm sorry, your, cl um, your clinical internships, mm -hmm. then you take the big certification test to uh, get your C yeah. <laughs> and then after you get your C then wherever whatever state you're working in you get licensed in that state. Very good. Mm -hmm. So what, where did you go to school? I went to school in central Illinois. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you came to Kingman how long ago? <laughs> about, a, about a year ago. Oh, all right. Great. This next coming week. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here, and we appreciate having you being a part of KRMC's team. It's awesome. Well, I enjoy being here. <laughs> Good. Well, I know acute rehab, it's, it's inpatient. Mm -hmm. you know, people actually come into that department at the hospital. We're going to watch a segment here from Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, their medical alert program entitled We Have. Of course. <laughs> we ha we have, we have. Let's watch this real quick. All right. There's no doubt that playing a game on a Wii gets you off the couch and moving. Bowling, tennis, yoga, you can really get a workout before you know it. That's the concept behind a new occupational therapy program at Mayo Clinic. Some therapists are using Wii's to help stroke victims and other patients get back in the game of life. It's not rehab, Use those muscles. but we have. I came here as a blob on a bed, and when they finally got me into a wheelchair where they could wheel me down here, we started with a bowling. Barbara Pivarnik has been in the hospital for weeks, recovering from complications of a bone marrow transplant. I kept coming down and, and doing more and more of it. And you get so involved in what you're doing, you don't know you're having a physical workout. Occupational therapist Bernadette Luberta says that's the whole idea. They're standing, they're sitting, they're actually using their arms, their legs, their balance, their muscles. And they're not realizing that they're doing it, and they're not 
realizing that we're actually providing a therapy for them and that they're actually working on their function and their balance. John Peterson's recovering from a stroke. The Wii helps his cognitive function, strength, and coordination. The Wii makes me change in the actions of my hands and my eyes. Okay. It gets Safety. people up, moving, and enjoying the process. And when people enjoy what they're doing, they're more likely to stick with the program, and that means they'll get better faster. My goodness, this is unbelievable. Using a gaming system to help get patients back in the game of life. Of course, in addition to using the Wii, all patients in Mayo's occupational therapy program have traditional therapy sessions too. But one other advantage of using a gaming system is that people keep up their therapy when they go home because it's fun. For Medical Edge, I'm Vivian Williams. So what do you think about that, Jill? Is that do you do stuff like that here in our acute rehab department? Oh, definitely. We okay. have we have a Nintendo Wii. We have the balance board. We have quite a bit of games, and so we are able to use those games and the different types of aspects that you have to use in order to play those games as part of our treatments with patients. As it showed in the video, um, it incorporates balance, incorpor mm -hmm. incorporates coordination, being able to multitask, problem solve and we can do different we can use those games in order to just enhance our patients treatment because it's not exactly practical to take everyone bowling or to take everyone skiing and right. so we can um, while they're here um, just allow them to have a little bit of fun because you know after a while especially if we have patients that have been here for a while the treatments can kind of get a little you know, can kind of a little boring right. and whatnot. So we want to make sure that we try to let them have as much fun as possible. Well, it's yeah, you're combining play with work. Yes, I guess that's a good way <laughs> to do it. I know mm -hmm. I have a Wii mm -hmm. at home, and I can't say I'm very good at it. My grandkids <laughs> beat me on a regular basis yeah. with it, <laughs> but it is—it's a fun game, and I can mm -hmm. see how, mm -hmm. like you said, with the bell. I mean, bowling for crying out loud. That mm -hmm. sounds something pretty simple, but you actually do use muscles that mm -hmm. you use your balance. You right. have to use coordination. You have to be able to multitask the different controls, and even with the other kind of sports games that they have on there, the tennis, the boxing, mm -hmm. you don't think about it, but when you're swinging that remote and doing those motions, you're using different muscles, and especially if you haven't used those muscles sure. in a while, you feel them, and you, right. you can definitely tell, and you're using, you're using all different types of techniques that we want to be able to incorporate and enhance in their therapy. Very good. Well, I know I've been up on the cute rehab floor, but mm -hmm. for our listeners or watchers who haven't <laughs> been up there, mm -hmm. what? Um, tell me a little bit about acute rehab. What it's like? Okay. Well. Um, it our patients stay with us um, until their discharge. They Each patient is required to have at least three hours of therapy a day. So that may not seem like, mu like much therapy to some people, but depending on our patient's abilities, you know, it's, it's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And by having that amount of therapy, it's kind of the fastest way that people can get their abilities back, get their strength back, and go home or go to whatever setting is next from us. So it's it's kind of like the, it's very intense, but it's the fastest way that people to can get, get to where they need home. to go after us. What, typically, what type of patients do you see? I mean, what, what has brought them to acute rehab? What kind of illnesses or injuries mm -hmm. do you see? We see quite a bit. We take we see all kinds of neuro patients, so stroke, traumatic brain injury, okay. spinal. Mm -hmm. um, we also see ortho patients, so hip fractures, hip replacements, knee replacements, those types of things. Okay. It w it really depends on one the diagnosis mm -hmm. as well as how debilitating the um, the diagnosis can be okay. and how it affects their daily routine. And so if it's, if it's very, if it's affected them quite a bit, then a stay at acute rehab can kind of get them fine tuned to where they can go home just as, just as independent or close to the way they were before they came to the hospital. That's great. And that's really mm -hmm. important. I mean, for even a person's self-worth. Oh, definitely. Feeling mm -hmm. that, you know, they're not going to be mm -hmm. an invalid or totally dependent on mm -hmm. someone else to take care of them. Exactly. And d our, many of our patients, you know, they, they, lived al they live alone or they mm -hmm. were just very independent to begin with before. And so after, depending uh, on what the diagnosis is, it can be a huge blow to their ego. Oh, and sure. so 
if we can teach them different ways and get them strong enough to where they can get back to taking care of themselves, not having to ask for help, right. not ha necessarily having to wait for other people, you know, that it's, it's a huge part of their recovery, you know, mm -hmm. the way they feel about themselves, their affect, it makes a huge difference. That's great. Well, and I know on the floor now you have, there's like a little mini apartment. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's set up, and so that's where they learn to make a bed and do yep. their laundry. Mm -hmm. It's all learn, set up. Learn how to cook a meal, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of our patients are part of a family, and some of them are even caregivers to other people mm -hmm. in their family. So by having a home set up in, on our unit, we can actually practice some of those homemaking activities. If laundry is something they typically do, we mm -hmm. can practice and try out different ways so that they can get back to doing the laundry. They may not want to, <laughs> but you know. Say, there might be some wives who want to send their husbands yeah. to just learn how to do laundry. Yeah, <laughs> some of them they say, you know, the just don't tell my family that I can do this again. <laughs> but you know, we also, we have a fully working kitchen and so w they are able to make, m make meals, mm -hmm. do different things. We even do something as simple as can can they at least get food out of the refrigerator and get it to the microwave? Something as simple as can sure. they feed themselves to, if it's their responsibility to feed their family, can they make a meal? Can they do it safely? <laughs> can right, yeah, that's important. Mm -hmm. And remember to shut off the burner. Exactly. And <laughs> where everything goes, do mm -hmm. dishes. Make sure they things. see where their hands are going so they don't cut themselves uh -huh. or burn themselves. Sure, and those, those are, you know, are little tasks that we kind of take for granted mm -hmm. when we're in our full health. But yep, obviously mm -hmm. when you've, like said, when you've had a stroke or mm -hmm. another debilitating mm -hmm. injury or illness, that's mm -hmm. those skills can very quickly mm -hmm. be taken away and you have to relearn them. And especially um, depending on the age of our patients, mm -hmm. we all kind of get in, into our own routine. We're used to doing things a certain way and as soon as any aspect of that is changed, so with some people it just completely messes up their world and so we try to reteach them how to incorporate that as part of their new life now. If they need to walk with a walker, how to get around the kitchen safely with a walker or in a wheelchair, or if they have, if they no longer have perfect use of one limb, how to incorporate that into now their daily routine. Wow, mm -hmm. that's great. Well, I know I've got some other questions I want to talk <laughs> with you about, so we'll get back to you right after this message. Stay tuned. <laughs> 